Leon looked down at his left hand again as he sat in the mess hall eating breakfast. It was a perfectly normal hand. His left hand was not a cybernetic prosthesis like his right. His left hand was lightly scared, covered in numerous small points of past injury from a rough life and many years of service to the United Nations Peace Corps. It wasn't that that still marvelled him, however. It was the colour. His skin was a light tan, a bit rosy on the back and whiter near his calluses. He smiled. It had been almost two months since their encounter with the Grey Star. He shivered slightly at the thought of the events that transpired after. After Samuel had been taken away in critical condition, Dr. Kimathi had been forced to give him a blood transfusion. She had been the first to notice the immediate effects of the fresh blood on his system. She had ordered a full dialysis of Samuel's system, and within a mere three days, his body was nearly free of the wash radiation. All that remained was of little consequence. The levels were far too low to cause harm, or even make him look colourless. In fact, his skin began to regain its colour just twelve hours later. Leon had been hooked up to the machines as well, and had his blood filtered and recycled through a series of scrubbers and anti-radiation chemicals. In a few days he'd found himself largely cured of the terrible scourge that was radiation poisoning. He blinked, and yet part of him still thought his skin looked just a teensy touch off, as if something unnoticeable had been permanently changed by the experience. Shadows seemed to linger on his skin a moment too long. The light almost looked too dim on his flesh, but it didn't do well for his mind to dwell on such improbabilities. His imagination was just running wild. Instead, it was a great time to think of the future, specifically the near future. They were nearing yet another warm yellow sun, this time one of their own choice, as Leon wasn't really happy with the options the Aori catalogue had shown them nearby. One military outpost on a barren moon in an uninhabited system, and the only other showed it had been destroyed even before the ruiners had come to clear them out. It was a far cry from a guaranteed find, but at least they had a chance to find something living on random worlds. Every planet they seemed to find that was in the Aori catalogue seemed to be dead or worse, a trap of some kind. He finished his plate and wiped his mouth before taking his dishes to the bin. The room was empty save for himself. Leon had woken later than was usual for him, late enough that Natalia had already been gone and the mess hall had been empty. He hated eating alone. It made the ship feel like a vast empty tomb to him. Here they were, not even three years into their twenty-year mission, and they had already almost died on no less than three separate occasions, nearly lost a member of the crew on at least five. Leon paused by the exit of the mess hall and looked back. The small room was sparse, a few tables with fold-down benches and tall walls. The ceiling was an unadorned white, and the only colour in the room was the row of coolers that dominated the right wall. The far wall had a countertop and windowless opening next to the double doors that led into the kitchen area. It was all as it should be, so why did it make him feel such apprehension? He might never know. Things had just felt off lately, as if he was seeing things he hadn't been able to before. Leon stepped out of the room and into the upwards curving hall of the main corridor. The large 120-metre habitat rings of the UNSS Leif Erikson had been designed to rotate and generate about 70% of Earth's gravity. This was enough to stem the degradation of their muscles with a little exercise, but not so much that the machinery of the ship was heavy under stress. After so many hundreds of days on the ship, walking up the gently curving floor felt as natural to him as breathing, but today of all days, he really took a moment to appreciate the tiny artificial world that they lived in. One microscopic speck in an infinite nothing that wanted them dead. Leon shook his head slightly and chuckled. The universe was vast beyond belief. They were travelling hundreds of times the speed of light, and yet it still took them weeks to jump between star systems. There were hundreds of billions of such stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone. It was truly a mind-boggling experience, and not a day went by without something on the ship fascinating him in some manner or another. Whether it was the complex magnetic dynamos that held the rings stable, or the ingenious linkages that allowed for water to flow between rings and the non-rotating core of the ship, it was all so much. And he was technically in charge of keeping it running, though he didn't really feel in charge. 
Instead, on most days, he felt more like some kind of cork in the throat of a bottle that was under pressure. Less of a crown and more of a stopgap. But it was his burden to bear, and so he bore it with all the pride he could muster. He instinctively rubbed his right shoulder with his left hand. The cybernetic arm he bore looked and felt real on the outside, but inside it was a different matter. It was cold, the slight tingle of it a near constant low-level pain that he had long learned to ignore. But since his incarceration and bout of wash radiation sickness, the arm had been feeling strange. Pulses of heat would come from it on rare occasions, not real heat, but a kind of false imaginary heat that he could not explain but seemed to momentarily paralyze the limb. It was an annoyance for the moment, but he feared that if the time came where he was in dire need of its strength, it could fail him. That caused him to falter in his stride, the misstep almost costing him his balance as he stumbled. Catching himself with his right hand, Leon looked at the limb. It seemed perfectly all right to his eyes, but inside was another matter. It passed, that small, fluttering feeling, but the idea of it lingered like a bad smell, and Leon couldn't help but grimace as he stood ramrod straight once more. From behind him came a subtle noise, and before he could so much as turn a pair of fingers, poked into his sides just above his waist as somebody squealed, Aha! The ribbing accompanied with the startling sound did indeed give him cause to jump. Oh, ah! He shouted and jumped forwards at a pace before whirling around. The tension left him immediately as soon as he saw its source. Sabine, w what the hell? You could have given me a heart attack, and you look like you could have used to pick me up. I was just testing your reflexes, and I must say, they are pretty good for an old man. She giggled at his grumpy features. Leon straightened and shuffled his feet. I'm not that old. His pouting seemed to only give the young woman more joy as her smile widened and she muttered a platitude that sounded a lot like sure thing grandpa to his ears. He just nodded to her comment as if he was oblivious to the underlying teasing. He had things to do. Sabine pranced over to him. So, what's the plan? Going to see Samuel again? Do you mind if I come? She smiled sweetly. Leon narrowed his eyes. Sabine was as good as a daughter to him, but she rarely strayed this close to his personal affairs. No, she must have been put up to it by somebody else. Leon asked, Who put you up to this? Was it Joyce? Natalia? Dr. Kimathy, perhaps? Sabine's smile almost instantly reversed into a frown. She opened her mouth to reply and he waved her off. Never mind, I don't really want to know. I'm fine, I don't need an escort. As soon as he said it, he felt bad about it. A hurt look crossed her features before her eyes hardened. Leon mentally swore, as he realized that he had just activated her stubbornness and now would likely not be able to say anything to get rid of her. Indeed, as he stood there, hands raised in an apologetic fashion, she retorted, Leon Muikman, you don't have the authority to tell me where I can and cannot go on this ship in my downtime. I have decided to go and visit Samuel whether you are going or not. And with a haughty breath, she strode off without him. For fuck's sake, he gasped in disbelief. He should have kept his stupid mouth shut and just played along. Now she was likely going to give him the cold shoulder all day long. With a slightly heavy heart, he followed her towards the nearest ladder rung. It was going to be a long day indeed. The trek to the medical wing of the ship wasn't difficult but he did experience slightly more difficulty climbing the ladder spokes than he normally did. He blamed it on nerves and ignored it, the creeping numbness quashed by iron will. Soon he found himself standing behind Sabine as she argued with Dr. Kimathy in the clean white medical suite. The dark-skinned Chadian woman was shaking her head at Sabine. No, you can't go in and see him right now. Dr. Kimathy noticed Leon entering and seemed to sigh silently as she rolled her eyes. Oh, not you too. Sabine glanced at him and then crossed her arms. Ugh, well, why not? Leon wanted to offer some help, but then thought better of it. He knew better than to jump in between the two women. It generally just made any argument they were involved in worse. The two didn't dislike each other exactly, but for some fundamental reason their personalities clashed. Dr. Kimathy was a very analytical person, and she took everything seriously. Sabine was the opposite. She could be serious but preferred to look at the world through different lenses. She constantly joked and made light of situations, not out of any malice, but more from some inherent need to laugh away the pain. 
Leon could well understand her need to humorize the world around her. What with her childhood being so dark, she had never really gotten the choice to be a kid. Instead, she had been forced to mature incredibly rapidly, her child mind pushed into the real world at far too young an age. When he had first met her, she had been nearly incapable of taking things seriously, but with some time and mentoring, she had grown into an incredibly brilliant young woman, although one that was a bit compelled to be less than fully serious. Leon raised a hand to get Dr. Kimathy's attention without interrupting their conversation. And that's final Sabine. What is it, Leon? she asked, tearing her gaze from Sabine's annoyed features. He shrugged. I was just dropping by to check on Samuel. If he is awake, would you please ask him if wants to see me? He paused, and after a second added, And Sabine? Dr. Kimathy paused, then nodded before shooting an annoyed look at Sabine. As she walked off further into the medical wing, Sabine turned to him. You didn't have to beg for me. I could have gotten by her. Yes, and fouled her mood as well as yours in the process. Trust me, Sabine, I love you and I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you. Can we please not take this to Samuel? I really don't think he needs our bullshit right now. Leon spoke in a blunt manner. He wasn't trying to be hurtful, but he knew that if he spoke truthfully, she would understand. Her face remained scrunched for a few moments before she nodded. Yeah, okay, but I still don't like the accusation that I only hang out with you when Joyce asks me to. Leon smiled. So it was Joyce, huh? Sabine threw her arms up and huffed. He just smacked her shoulder gently and chuckled. I was an officer for a decade. I know how to get to people, Sabine. And it's okay. I would have figured it out anyways in a few days. I'm happy you're here, always. Sabine just huffed again and then shot him a small smile. He smiled back. He knew that she wouldn't stay angry for long. It wasn't in her character. Dr. Kimathy walked back into the small chamber and nodded. All right, he says you are fine. But you only get to stay for fifteen minutes, and if he becomes agitated in any way you are to call for me immediately. Leon gave her a thumbs up and a grin. I know the procedure, Doc. She shot him a serious look that he countered with an even wider grin. She liked things to be exactly as she liked them, and the whole situation with Samuel had so nearly gotten out of hand that she still wasn't leaving anything to chance. He honestly couldn't blame her. She loved Samuel, the young man and Oliver having become very close over the last few years of the mission. So it wasn't any real surprise to him when they entered the medical suite and saw Oliver sitting next to Samuel's bedside, a book in hand. Samuel was sitting upright and looking much better than the last time Leon had visited. The brightness was back in his eyes, and he was laughing as Max gave tiny snake-like kisses to his ear, her tiny forked tongue tasting his skin as she looked curiously into the young man's ears. As the two of them walked in, Samuel noticed them and smiled even wider. He called to them, his voice a hoarse whisper that made Leon wince internally. Leon! Sabine! Oh, this day just keeps getting better! Ucked, Max, what are you doing, you goofball? He spluttered as Max poked her head curiously into his open mouth. Oliver laughed, his coarse voice matching his somewhat roughened appearance. Hello, Leon, Sabine, it's good to have more company. He stood and strode over to them throwing an arm around Sabine's shoulder and shaking Leon's hand firmly. It's been a bit slow today, so I decided to come and bring Max by for a bit of a pick-me-up. He was whispering now, but not doing a very convincing job of it. If Samuel could hear him, he pretended not to, though. Sabine nodded and moved away to go and chat with the younger man, as Leon turned to Oliver and motioned with his head towards Samuel. How has he been? Oliver went to shrug, but he continued. Not good enough, Oliver. I know you've been in here nearly six hours a day ever since he woke up. What is your assessment of his condition? Oliver shuffled his feet and looked up at the ceiling. After a moment he locked eyes with Leon and shook a single hand nervously. I'm not really sure, Leon. One moment he is fine, smiling and chatty, a bit more than normal in fact, and then the next moment he... Oliver faltered, a dark look creeping into his eyes, a haunted look. Leon prompted the man gently placing a hand on the man's shoulder in a supportive fashion. Oliver, it's me. You can tell me anything, right? Oliver nodded and then whispered, much quieter this time. He was talking about the darkness, the one that involved Aiden. Whenever he mentions it, he gets real quiet-like, as if... 
as if he's afraid that talking about it, it's going to happen again. He paused. I don't know. I'm worried about the mission. This ship is cursed, Leon. There is something here on the ship with us. Leon waved a hand. There is nothing to worry about, Oliver. I mean it. Aidan is fine now, and Samuel will be too. I won't deny that there seems to be strange things happening around the ship from time to time, but I don't think we have any reason to worry. Oliver frowned, but nodded at his reassurance, and Leon felt a twisting in his gut. He hated lying to his crew, but for the sake of the many he needed to quell talk of dark spirits and superstition immediately before it had a chance to take root. And he was indeed lying. He was alarmed by the news. Very alarmed. He patted Oliver on the back and mused over the man's words. If the dark entity was branching out from him now to other members of the ship, what did that mean? Leon wanted to stop worrying about it, but he couldn't. And so he did the next best thing. He pushed the worry far into the dusty corner of his mind and ignored it, burying it under years of unconfronted battle trauma and lingering self-doubts. He shook his head and walked over to Samuel and the others. Before he had even reached them, he heard an excited sounding hiss before a blue-green flash leapt towards him. He gave a yell of surprise and then hunched slightly in embarrassment as he realized it was just Max, the snake-like alien creature that Oliver had adopted from a past expedition. For whatever reason, the small alien serpent had seemed to change its little mind about him and now treated him as some sort of human playground whenever she saw him. He raised his hands in a non-threatening way, still not entirely trusting of the animal in the way that Oliver did. Hey there, Max, good snake, nice snake. Her little shiny green eyes fixed on his own, and her thin tongue darted from her mouth, tasting the air in a manner disturbingly similar to earthly snakes. He reached out towards her, and she cocked her head a little, as his fingers got closer to her body. Slowly, he gave her the tiniest of head stitches, trying not to startle the venomous creature, but he might as well have been petting a kitten for all the harm she meant him. She coiled around his neck in a loose bunch after a second and settled her head in the nape of his neck. He could see her out of the corner of his eye as she seemed to yawn and then close her eyes. A strange noise, almost like a sigh, escaped her tiny mouth as she settled down. Looking up to the others, he smiled weakly as he noticed they were all laughing at his less-than-manly reactions to the funny little creature. Ha ha ha! I want to see you all acting brave the next time a deadly animal decides to use you as a pillow, huh? They just laughed harder, and he shook his head slowly so as not to wake Max. It was going to be an interesting day, it seemed. It was dark. No, not dark. It was nothing. The outer sensors of the ship could not detect anything at all. No incoming radiation, no light or heat, not even electrical fields or gravity disturbances. Leon wasn't worried, though. The life Ericsson was still at full warp. The artificial event horizon that surrounded the ship blocked out everything. It was like they were travelling in their own tiny little universe. Everything they could interact with stuck to a small sphere barely larger than the ship itself. Leon sat back in his padded chair, the microgravity restraints on his chest holding him in place as he sat in the command throne of the bridge. They were almost on top of their next stop, and he wanted to make sure that he was here. Samuel had only been discharged from the medical wing three days prior. He seemed to be all right, but Leon wasn't taking any chances. He had Dr. Kimathy on standby if anything happened. Samuel himself didn't seem to notice the tension at all, he tapped away on his console without a worry on his features. The angry red scar that cut across his throat was stark. Samuel had quickly decided not to cover it up or avoid the topic. He had talked to Leon about it on several occasions. Leon remembered the first time he had asked the boy. He had asked Samuel what he remembered, and he had answered him that he remembered nothing. Well, not exactly nothing. He remembered a fire, or flames, deep and angry, and a darkness surrounding them that hurt to look at. As soon as he had said it, Leon's blood had frozen. That sounded disturbingly close to the dark thing that haunted his own dreams. Leon shook his head as something broke his concentration. Hmm? What? Joyce shook her head from the chair next to him. Off in Leonland again, were we? Well, when you decide to join us, I was just mentioning that the system we are about to drop into 
has an anomaly that we detected in the data last week, if you remember. He nodded. Yes, the unexplained brightening that happens periodically every few days. Terry mentioned it, I remember. Joyce continued to stare at him for a moment, as if making sure he was paying real attention now, before turning back to her own console. He sighed internally. She was a great second in command, but she took her duties incredibly seriously, and it could be a bit of a stressor at times. But he was happy with his decision, and never in a million years would he take it back. End of transmission.